In this video, I'm going to talk about the stability of a linear control system. Um, so this is a continuation of the, our discussion on the analysis of, uh, of, of control system. So the previously we talked about if I give a control, I give a control system and I give input, how do I figure out the, you know, the output? And also how do we figure the, the control performance given the uh, given uh, control input and given the control system? So <clears throat> one of the important properties we want to see for the control system is to ensure the stability. So what, what does uh, stability mean here? So let me give you a very simple example showing you what is the stability of, of, a, of a control system. Let's see now, let's see, um, I'll give you three different examples over here. So first example is I put a, a ball on the flat surface, okay? And if I apply a, a force applied to this object, for example, I can move it left and right and along the surface. Uh, surface. Of course, assuming here I don't have a, there's no friction between the ball and the surface, so you can move the left and right freely. The next example I'm going to show you for the second one is uh, when we have a ball-like shape a surface, and the the ball will moving. You can also say I can put the ball at a certain location and let it move up and and, and apply a force to the ball. Apparently, apparently, the ball will move to the left and right. But if you release, the ball will go go down, come down, and stabilize one point, which is the lowest point of this uh, this uh, ball-like shape. So on the right hand side, you sort of can see it doesn't matter where you put initially. So eventually, it's going to stop at the certain point. Okay, so that's that's what happens. Okay, um, oh, this point is also called equilibrium. The last example I'm going to show you is the one we have uh, opposite to the second case. It's a ball shape, but it's outside of the ball. It's not inside the ball. So ball. So what happens is, if you put on any location and you apply a force, and this ball will move to the very left or very right and keep on running. Okay. So there's no um, like equilibrium point. So this is sort of uh, describes three different cases in terms of stability. So the very first one you can consider as neutral because you know you can move it back and forth, but it doesn't go crazy like last one going keep on going for example. Well, the second case is called stable case because it doesn't matter where you go, you're gonna stabilize this one. Assuming of course here we have friction. Okay, if you do have friction, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna stop right at the the, universe, the lowest point over here. Very last point is called unstable case because. Unless you have, unless you put a, you don't apply anything, you put a very top stable point over here, and you don't apply a force, you stay there. Otherwise, going to keep to the move to the right and left, keep, keep on moving. Okay, so this is the basic concept of stability. So, for a given control system, we actually want to see if I apply certain control input, for example, would that give me a, a given a certain control input, a given control system? What is the outcome? What is the output looks? What uh, what is uh, uh, does the output look like? Do we have a finite outlook, out, output? Do we have an infinite output? So that determines our stability. So the central question for the stability of a linear control system is how do we check the stability? Okay. Okay. So now before talking about how do we check the stability, mm -hmm. let's talk about what is the definition of stability. So stability is determined defined as this a little bit long, but I'm going to read it. The stability is the ability of a dynamic system to restore its desired equilibrium position when disturbed, or the ability of a dynamic system yield a bounded output given a bounded input. So actually, it talks about two different things. Okay, the first one is uh, the ability of dynamic to restore its equilibrium position when disturbed. So this is exactly what I mentioned over here. For example. The, as we sort of can see, the equilibrium point for the, the ball like shape, if you move it back and forth, for example, it's this is the equilibrium point. So the disturbance means if I move the ball, for example, to this location here and release it, okay, this disturbance you call, then it will still go here, okay. If I move this, uh, this ball to the very right hand side, like a blue location or the new red location, they're still they will still go back to this location, equilibrium point. So this one, that's why it's stable according to the definition. 
The other one is the ability of a dynamic system to yield a bounded output given a bounded input. Which means if I, let's say if I apply a force, some force over here, a bounded force, you sort of can see eventually going to, uh, you, you can only up, go up to certain points. Because you cannot go, if you keep on going, you see is a, you, you should apply very a lot of force right, to do that. So assuming if I have bounded force, uh, output and uh, input, then you should give me a bounded output. So that's sort of the definition of stability. Now let's take a look at what is the condition. What is a you know we'll give example about how do we verify the, the, the stability? Okay. So first, let's take a look at uh, example to see what's going to happen. For example, if I give you uh, uh, a dynamical system written by one over square s square plus two, and uh, this is a, a unit negative feedback. If I give a control, I give an input is u sub t, I give out output y sub t. So apparently I want to take a look what is output. Okay, because essentially this one either the first part this is equilibrium point position or or is the bounding output. This equilibrium refers to the output. Okay, it says output is at certain equilibrium position. Uh, this here, bound output. It also, this also means output. So, which means the stability talks about the property for the output. It's not for the input. Okay. So let's take a look at what is the output. If I give certain control input, okay, what is the output? Okay. So let's say I give a, a ut, which is uh, which is a unit step input, and the given control system given by this is unit negative feedback. I try to want to figure out hey, what is yt. Is yt stable? Meaning that is yt bounded, or is will yt go to some equilibrium point? Okay, that's that's what we want to see. Okay, so in order to calculate what is my y, uh, y the output. So because that's the stability talk about the probability for the output. So let's compute first compute what is the transfer function because after I figure out transfer function, I can compute the output. So the transfer function is y sub divided by u sub s is a trans t f of s. Okay, so this is uh, we can use the property of block diagram to, to find out the transfer function because this is a unit negative feedback. So we can use the property for the unit neg negative feedback. So this is a user block diagram. So I to try to figure out that. So it's one over s square plus s divided by one plus one over s square plus two. Okay, so once we do that, it's one over s square plus three. So that's my uh, transfer function. So once I have trans function, I can sort of, since I already give the input, which is u sub s, uh, ut is a unit step input, for example. Uh, so it's with u sub s times trans function that gives us the uh, output of y sub s, of course in the s domain. So which is 1 of s times 1 of s squared plus s. So this one can be sort of written as, if you use the partial fraction expansion, so it can be written as a divided by s plus b s plus c divided by s squared plus 3. So this one, if you do the inverse, if you do the f of t is L inverse, uh, so this is y sub t, y sub s, this give us L inverse of a of s plus, I can do the linear property, is plus L inverse b s plus c over s squared plus 3 basically okay so this one this guy we get it is uh, just a okay this one this for this one if you use a table you sort of look at the table this one is just uh, the sinusoidal function so this one is just the sine sine or cosine function okay so which means it's always bounded uh, to a certain extent okay so that's so why you sort of can say hey my y output is just like this okay sort of uh, the average is sort of A and it's going to up and down around this the point of A. So A is not equilibrium because you do sine, sine, the cosine, so you could somehow like this. So the, it may not be an equilibrium point, but the y output will be, will be bounded. So this is stable. We can see this is a stable. Okay, I can see this is stable. Okay. All right, so essentially what we can see from here, why is it stable, why is it stable, right? Because we can uh, generally, of course, every time we can check the output and just see if it's, just, it's bounded, for example, or if it if the white will go to some equilibrium point. However, it's not a very to check this uh, very, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the solution all the time, especially when the 
trust function become complex, it's not very easy to check the the solution. So, would that be any easy way we can check the the the, the stability? So one way we can do that is we can use the you know the um, what do we call it? the the pose of the trans function. The, actually, the pose of trans function will determine the stability. The reason that the pose of the way determines stability is given by this. I give you a very simple analysis uh, reasoning of that, but this is a general case that will apply to any any cases. So assuming here I give a transfer function, okay, of a system given by one over s minus m time uh, s minus n. So this is what we have. So we have we have poles at m and n. Okay, let me rewrite it. So we have poles is m and n because I have two solutions. One the s is equal to m, one is the s equal to n. So there are two poles. So assuming I have a step input, unit step input, so my y sub s is 1 over s, this is, a, okay, assuming it's u sub t is 1, which means my u of s is 1 over s. So once I do that, my y sub s is 1 over s times 1 over s minus m and s minus n. So this is my transfunction time of input. Okay, assuming my m and n are different, we can make it a little bit simple. So according to the partial fraction expansion, so I sort of can Rewrite this one as a over s plus b over s minus m plus c over s minus n. Okay, so if we do the y sub t, which is the uh, inverse Laplace transform of y sub s, is L inverse of this individually by using linear property. So what I get up, uh, get the output of y sub t is a plus b times e m t plus c times e n t. Now you sort of can see, so yeah, this is constant, so it doesn't affect the stability, so it's stable actually. So this guy is, it depends on m is positive or negative. Is m is negative, or I say the real part of m is less than zero, and the real part of this n is less than zero, you can see this guy will go to zero. This guy will go to zero. So essentially, you will stabilize this point. You have equilibrium point, which is a. So that is stable. So essentially, this value, the value of m and n, especially real part of m and n, they are really important which means the location of the poles are really important. So if I would draw the difference between for different type of M and N over here, for example, this red one represents if I have M and N, the two poles, and they're over here, they're positive, and they're, uh, no, I should just write over here, this is the real part, this is the imaginary part of my pole. If they're on the right hand side, they're all positive, you can see the output Y of T somehow like this. If I have the poles M and N, they are complex conjugate, so they are like this, you saw the output like this, like blue color. If I have a proper one, so left hand side, but they are, they, are, they are negative real part, so it's sort of like this. If I have this is the, the orange color, the two poles, they're located over here, you sort of have somehow like this. So you sort of can see the different locations for the poles will determine the, the output, especially even the control performance. So at least we can see, if the poles are, are, are located on an open left half plane, which means the real part of the poles are all uh, negative, so we can sort of see they are they are stable. Okay, so what so the question is what determines stability? We can see the location of the poles or transfer function determines stability. So the next question is what is the condition to guarantee the stability of a control system? So here's a necessary and a sufficient condition. So which means the a control system is stable if and only if all poles of the system transfunction have negative real parts. So that's the necessary and sufficient condition. What that means is we must have th that the poles of the transfunction uh, have negative real parts to guarantee the stability. Okay, if any of the poles are does not have negative real parts, then we can say the system is not a the control system is not a stable. So that's what we mean by necessary and sufficient condition. Okay, so but how do we check the system is stable? Okay, so a couple of ways. So first of all, you can check the uh, solution directly over here. Okay, so you can say check the solution directly to see if it's stable. Okay, if you're given bound input or bound output. Okay, the second one is you can use a pose. So this one, okay, you can yet yeah, check solution. One per approach directly. Second one is you can check the poles of the trans function, okay, 
the third project I'm going to talk about later on. I'm going to talk, no, don't talk about it over here, so I'll talk about later on what is third project. This is called uh, Rouse uh, Criteria. So there's a third approach you can check that one, okay? So let's talk about using second approach right now because we can check to the pose or transfer function, okay? Let's give you an example right up here. Let's say I give you um, a closed loop, unit negative feedback closed loop system given by this. So I have this system between one over s squared plus two s and input u of s, y put, uh, output y sub s. So as I mentioned earlier, to check the stability of the control system, I just need to compute the transfer function. And to verify if the pose of the transfer function are all in the have negative real parts. That's what I want to check. So apparently the first step is we want to compute the transfer function. Okay, because the unit negative feedback, so I can use the property of the block diagram, okay, to check the transfer function. Transfer function is just a unit negative feedback you can use the property. So it's one over s squared plus two s time uh, divided by one plus one over s squared two s. So which now has to just simplify a little bit. So we have we can multiply both the numerator and denominator by s squared plus 2s. So by some simplification, I have 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 1. So which can be written as 1 over s plus 1 times s plus 1. Okay. So step 2 is we can check the pose to see if they have negative real parts. Okay. Let's, to check the pose, we set the denominator to be 0, which means I set the s plus 1 times s plus 1 to be 0. Be zero and then find a solution, which gives me two solutions. One is s is negative one and s is negative one. Apparently both poles have negative real parts, so the system is stable. Okay? Now let me go to the next example. It's a more complex one. Okay. What if I have a more complex example? So I have a still the use of s and y s, so I direct give you a trans function so you don't have negative feedback or anything like that. Of course, you might have more complex with the unit feedback. Let's say this is a transform you already gave. It's s squared plus 3s plus 7 divided by s to the fifth plus 2s to the fourth plus 5s cubed plus 7s squared plus s plus 2. So that's my transfer function. So apparently, first step, we already have a trans, trans function. So next question, how do I find the pole? So the pole is solution to this, s to the fifth plus 2s to the fourth plus 5s to the cube plus 7s squared plus s plus 2 and set to be 0. I don't find out what the solution to this one. So this is very hard, very difficult to compute, right? So there are five solutions, right? s1, s2, s3, so on to s5. There are five solutions. So it's very hard to compute the solution directly, okay? Uh, so what are we what what should we do in this case? If especially we have the very high order system maybe even s to the tenth power so it's very hard to compute all the all the all the poles okay so what should we do so that's why we talk about the third uh third method is called a ralph's Hervis criterion so which is called a ralph's Hervis criterion so the main idea of the ralph's Hervis criterion is to say um, i can tell if the poles are in the open left half plane without needing to compute the poles this is a kind of intuitive because I just want to know, make sure the poles are in the open left half plane, which means the poles have negative real parts. I don't need to compute the actual value. Well, the second approach, I will just directly compute the poles of the transfer function, which may not be ne necessary, okay? So the rust price criteria says there are a couple of conditions we can verify uh, to, to verify that the system have negative real parts, uh, the poles have negative real parts without needing to compute the poles, as the actual poles, okay? The uh, poles. Okay, so the Ras Hurts criteria says, okay, this is what the, the Ras Hurts criteria says. Criteria says all poles of trans function are in the open left half plane, which means they have negative real parts. If and only if a certain set of uh, algebraic con combination of the coefficients all have the same sign. Okay, so what it says, okay, it's a little bit vague at this moment. Okay, I want to talk about what are what kind of algebraic combinations later on, okay, what is the kind of, what is that? So this one, I haven't talked about it yet, I'll give you an example later on, there are a couple of cases we'll talk about that, okay. So if this set of algebraic condition of the coefficients all have the same sign, you say it's the same sign. So it doesn't mean the negative, it could be negative, it could be positive, okay? as long as it has the same sign, it's okay. So note here, all poles of the trans function are in the open left plane, 
meaning that the opposite of the transformation have negative real parts is equivalent to that to the statement that the system is stable. So the Rankers criteria is trying to uh, say that there's no need to solve for the poles in order to check the stability. Okay. So the next key question is what is the Rankers criterion and how to use the Rankers criterion to check the stability. So there are a couple of rules to use the Rankers criterion. So I'll talk about it one by one. So I wouldn't finish all the rules, but I probably finish uh, one or two in this lecture. Maybe uh, some more in the next uh, video. So first rule says all coefficients of the characteristic equation should have the same sign. Okay, all right. Okay, so first of all, what is the current? What is the characteristic equation? Okay, this is the definition of characteristic equation. Okay, characteristic equation. So it is uh, the denominator of the trans function set to be zero. That's called a characteristic characteristic equation. Okay. For example, if I give you a system given by this I have a transfer function is one over s to the fourth plus three s cubed minus five s squared plus s plus one. Okay, so if you set a denominator to be zero, you basically have s to the fourth plus three s cubed minus five s squared plus plus one equal to zero. Okay, so what this rule number one says, all coefficients of the characteristic equation should have the same sign. So I just figure all the efficiencies, right? The coefficients. So coefficients are all those numbers in front of s to the different powers. For example, s to the fourth, you, you can have one coefficient which is one because you can consider this is one time that. So the coefficient for s to the fourth is one, for s to the cube is three, for s to the square is negative five, for to the s is also one, okay, because I can put it as a one time s. And then plus one, one is constant, okay? So because there is a they do not have the same sign because they have positive, positive, and this is negative, positive, positive. So they don't have the same sign, so it's not stable. Okay, so this is a second example. If I have a, this, give you a transfer function is like this: is one of s to the fourth plus two s to the cube plus three to the s squared plus ten s plus eight. Yes, if you use a rule number one, you can say all coefficients have the same sign, but this is only necessary but not sufficient. This is necessary. So I must have this one. They must have the same sign. But even if they have the same sign, they are not stable, right? Because otherwise, it's, it, it, should, it doesn't make sense, right? Because if you have more positive, uh, a, a positive sign, it's not stable, right? So this is necessary, which means even if the, the coefficient of the characteristic equation does have the same sign, in this case, for the second case, the same sign because they are all positive, it doesn't mean they are stable. Okay, if you check the rule number one, you say okay, all the pole, the coefficient of the characteristic equation does have the same sign, okay, we just need to continue. If not, we're done, we just say not stable. Okay. The rule number two says the first column of the Ralph's array does not change the sign. So this one, I'll talk about the next specific condition later on. Okay, so this says Okay, the first column of the Ross array does not change the sign. Okay, if it doesn't change the sign, if it changes sign, that's not stable. If it does not, if it does not change the sign, it's stable. I'll talk about it later. On. Okay, so first of all, what is the Ross array? Because you talk about the first column of the Ross array, right? Okay, so what's the, what is Ross array? Okay, so Ross array is a set of operations for the coefficients for the characteristic equation. Okay. So again, the characteristic equation is you set this to be zero, okay? And the coefficients are a and b and c and d and e, assuming that I have like a to the s to the sixth power, as a high, the sixth order system, okay? I have a, the, the characteristic equation is given by a times s to the sixth plus b times s to the fifth plus c times s to the fourth plus d to the s to the cube plus e times s squared plus f times s plus g. This is my, uh, my um, set to be zero. This is my characteristic equation, which means I have coefficients a and b and c and d and e and f and g. That's my coefficients. Okay. So let's talk about what is the Ross array. How do I compute the Ross array? Okay. So this is how we do the Ross array. Okay. It's a little bit complex to begin with, but actually it's not a very very difficult. So what I do is you first of all to do the to calculate Ross array, you first uh, uh, draw a uh, horizontal line and vertical line, okay? After you draw a vertical line, you draw, you write for the vertical, before you put anything here, 
you put S to the 6, this is to the highest power you have for your system, okay, to the S6, you put S6 over here, then you reduce the order by 1, 1 until you go to S0, okay, you see S6, S5, S4, S3, S2, S2 to 2, S2 to 1, S2 to 0, so you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you sort of consider you have 7 rows, okay, now after that, we put the numbers in, okay, how do I put that, we just put the coefficients in, okay, what we do is we only put numbers directly uh, using those coefficients for the first two uh, rows. Okay, well, how do we put the first two rows? We put A and then bottom go down, B. So first row, okay, S to the 6, we put A. For the S to the 50, we put B. And then we sort of go and C and D. So for the X6, we put a second column, we put a C. For the S to the 5th, the second column, I put a D and E and F and G and so on and so forth. So if you say I have something missing, you can put a zero. You can put a more zero over here if you want to. So that doesn't really matter. So but you don't need those, okay? So you only have to make this one uh, a zero zero if you need it, okay? If you have uh, nothing over here, you can put a zero, okay? So what once we do this is how we 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 fill the first row card for first for two rows. So you do you put all the coefficients according to where they appear. Okay, according to the order of S to the 6th, S to the 4th. Okay, so you put A, B, C, D, you do uh, first, uh, you first finish all the first row, for the first two rows, of course, right? Uh, two uh, row, right? A and B and C and D and E and F and G and 0. So that's what it, uh, how we do that. Okay, all the remaining columns, they are computed from one column by one column. So you start with S to the 4th, then S to the 3, and then S to the 2, S to the 1, S to the 0. Okay, now I'm going to talk about how we compute to the the row for the for the uh, the next row, which is S to the fourth. Okay, so let's compute what how to compute the first one right over here. Okay, this is better how to compute that. So this one is I I write over here is given by B C minus A and D and divided by B. Now how do I remember that? So what you remember is you go and you directly pick the name, the, the entry right bef uh, above this this uh, this uh, this block. So right above this is B, right? So B, you do cross back cross back. So this what each one of this is first of find first find the entry right above it. Then apply the rule we call cross back cross back. So I'm gonna talk about what do I mean by cross and back, cross and back. When we do a cross, we do the product. Let's say B cross C is B times C. When we do a back is negative, which means negative. You connect to this one and cross a cross d, so it's a times d, and back the last back is divide is is divide by b. So, so first back this is a cross. I write it over here. Okay, emphasize here. This cross is a product. So this cross is a product. This cross is a minus. Of course, this this cross is also a product, and this back is divide okay so cross pro, cross back cross back okay so you do b and c minus a and d divide b this is what you should put over here this is what that uh, this value should be okay this is what i can do this value so the same rule apply for the blue one you don't need to do the blue one okay blue one you first look at what is what is right above this is d right d you do cross back cross back so, so does this cross the the first one cross this one? Let's do this. I want to give you more detail. The product. Uh, okay, I want to emphasize this. This is go upper right for the cross. This cross you do uh, lower or down right. The different cross, okay. So you do first one, you cross up, upper right, and then you uh, cross down, uh, down right, do cross, okay. 
So similarly for the blue one, as uh, for the for the for the for the uh, blue one, yes. For the blue one, you just go find first of all find the entry right above it, which is D. You do cross upper upper right cross. You do D times E, and the back is minus C cross F C cross F. Is C times F is B D E minus C F divided by D. Okay, back you divide by D. Similarly for the for the orange color one, okay. So what I do is you do orange color one is the right the one right above it is F G F cross G right minus E times zero right and divide by F so that's it okay you can also do the same thing. so this once you do that that you don't have any more right because you have to do over here there's nothing uh, more you just you can stop it right over here so this is for the third row for the fourth row that adds to the third you can do the same pr principle the same for this uh, uh, sort of uh, the uh, for this one for this block right here what it does I just show you we have computer this okay so it is you first the final one right above it, which is a red block. Okay, time you do cross cross is D right time D minus this back is minus, and B cross B times this blue one and divide by the red one. So you can follow the same principle to compute raster. You can put all the stuff later on. So you put all those stuff. Let's see right over here. You build all the stuff. Maybe you have over here somehow like that. You build everything until you go to S zero. The last row is you only have one entry. The last row, this one, you always have a single entry. You don't have, there's no more than one. So that's why this is what is the RAS array. The RAS array is the calculation of all those numbers. That's called a RAS array. So what it says here is the first column of the RAS array. So when you look at the first column, the first column is this, is this guy. Is what happened over here. This is the first column. If the first column doesn't change the sign, yeah, it's stable. If the first column change the sign, it's not stable. Okay, all right. To give you an idea about how we do that, I want to give you an example so it's easy to 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 know. Okay, let's say if I have a characteristic equation is given by this is s to the fourth plus two s to the cube plus three s squared plus ten s plus eight. Okay, here I put the sign to be positive because otherwise it will be according to rule number one. It's just not stable. So I just use the same sign to be positive. Okay, so first of all, the highest power is to the fourth, right? So first I I, I put a, a draw a, a horizontal line and a vertical line, and uh, then I put it to the s fourth, s three, s two, s one, s zero over here. So I have five rows. Okay. So uh, as I mentioned, the first two rows I just to fill fill these numbers in because you can solve since this is a one time, one the coefficient of one two three ten eight. So you do is a one two three ten eight. Now for, of course I put a zero over here, right? I can put it over here. So for the this is the first two rows I wrote down. Very simple. For the third row as to the square. Okay. So this value is calculated by what is you check right above it. Okay. This number I already calculated negative two, but I want to tell you how do I do that. So this one, uh, I don't calculate why it's negative two. So what it, what is happens? This guy, this number. Let me show you how I compute this. So when you do that, what he does is you do you first check the entry right above it, which is two over here. So it's two right, cross right, cross two times three, back right. So minus back here is one, one cross, the cross of this down right, cross ten. Right, and then back is divided by two, right? So that's why the value is two. Two times three is six. Six minus ten is negative four. Negative four divided by two is negative two. So that's why I compute that. So you can also do this one. This is I already give you is, is eight. The reason I can do that is uh, you tr find an entry right above it is ten, right? Ten cross back cross back. So it's cross ten times eight minus three times zero, right? And then you divide by back is also 10, so you get 8. Okay? So you keep on doing this one. So this is I finish S2. You can put a 0 over here if you want to. And then you go back to S1. S1, you, again, you do the same rule. You do the cross back, cross back, right? Then you do divide by itself. This you turn out to get 18. And this guy, you do cross back, cross back, you get a 0 over here. So last one, you do the same thing. It's a cross back, cross back, you get 8. Okay? So now I can change, change, check in the first column. I'm right. So this all the numbers is my RAS array, and I just have to check if the first column change sign or not. If you check the first column, it's just 
one, two, negative two, eighteen, and eight. So yeah, you have a change of sign because I have negative two. This negative values, all other values are positive, right? So there, there's a change of sign. So it's not a stable. Okay. All right. So the rest array is powerful not only to verify the you know stability by only checking you know the first column rest array, but also we can check how many by checking the first column of the my rest array. I can also tell how many poles uh, have positive real, real parts. So this is what it says. The number of the change sign in the first column of the rest array is the number of poles of the transfunction with positive real parts. So let's also consider the example. So go to from here to here doesn't change the sign. From two to negative two you change the sign, okay, once. From negative two to eighteen we change it uh, again. From negative ten to eight doesn't change. So we have two changes. Here change, here change. So we have two change, right? So which means I have two two changes from two to negative two that's change. From negative two to eighteen that's change. So I have two poles have negative real part because I have two change of sign in the first column of the last array okay so as a matter of fact we can this is is we should remember that the control system is stable if the column and the, the first column and the row array does not change the sign okay if i combine with this one it says that the first column row array does not change the sign which means if it changes sign it's not stable right which I would say here is the control system is stable if and only if the first column of the rust rate does not change the sign. We can say that. Okay? So now here give you another example to show that to use the you know this this property to use to, to use a to check the rust array, uh, first column rust array to see if the system is stable or not. Let's see I have a transfer function of given transfer function given by one over s to the fourth plus two to s uh, q plus four s plus three, okay? So we want to see if the system is stable or not. Okay. So again, we want to draw a horizontal line, a vertical line, a horizontal and a vertical line. And I put S fourth. This is the highest power, right? S fourth, S cube, S squared, S one, S S zero, right? Now I want to find the coefficient for the characteristic equation. Characteristic is just you put the set of S fourth plus two S cube plus four S plus three equal to zero, right? So I just find the coefficient. So the coefficients are so you can consider this is a one time s to the fourth, two times s cube. I don't have s squared. You can consider this as plus zero times s squared. You cannot leave it empty. You must have the coefficient even if it's zero, right? So for the s cube, s squared, I have coefficient zero. For s, the coefficient is four. For the last constant, is three. So the coefficients are one, two, zero, four, and three. Okay. So I have one. Two, so I put those number in I, as I mentioned over here. So I first finish the first uh, uh, two rows. So it's one, two, zero, four, three. Okay. Of course, I can put a zero over here to make it uh, to complete it. Okay. Now I'm going to follow the rules and the mention to compute the, the this row, this uh, this row row. For example, you check the the you check the one right above it. And you do cross back cross back. You do two times zero minus this guy here is. 2 times time 0 minus 1 times time 4 and then divide by 2 so you get negative 2 so you can simply you can do this all the rules and you can compute all the values negative 2 3 0 7 uh, 7 this is uh, this is 0 clear. So this is 0 okay and finally this is 3 so that's why I computed the, the, the rough array if you check the first column the numbers are 1 2 negative 2 7 and 3 so yeah, we do have a change of sign because uh, the one, two, seven, three, they are positive, but this is negative sign. So do we have change of signs unstable? And also according to what we mentioned over here, uh, so we do have two poles that have negative real parts because it changes sign twice. From two to negative two, change of sign. From negative two to seven, change of sign. So the the transfer this one this one have we can also say the two poles are transfer. The the transfer has two poles. That have negative real parts. Okay, so this is the two probably for the Ross array, uh, Ross uh, Horst criterion. So I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, about this uh, Ross Horst criterion in the next video.